Slide 1. Welcome to Networking and Health Information Exchange Basic Health Data Standards. This is Lecture D. This component, Networking and Health Information Exchange, addresses what is required to accomplish networking across and among disparate organizations who have heterogeneous systems. As one might imagine, this topic covers a lot of territory fraught with new topics and a lot of acronyms. Our apologies, but that is what it is. We suggest you keep your glossary beside you as you study this material. Unit 4 covers basic health data standards and consists of six lectures. Over these six lectures, we will identify the set of standards necessary to establish semantic interoperability. In this fourth lecture, Lecture D, we will introduce the concept of a data element, define an enriching set of attributes, and understand the potential of this approach to achieving interoperability. Slide 2. The objectives for this unit, Basic Health Data Standards, are to understand why it is necessary to use a common set of data elements with common names to be able to exchange and understand data from other places. Understand what is meant by semantic interoperability. Understand many of the sets of controlled vocabularies in use today, how they are used, and who requires their use. Slide 3. Additional objectives for this unit, Basic Health Data Standards, are to understand the use, purpose, and interrelation among sets of controlled vocabularies in use today. Identify the more common controlled vocabularies in use today. ICD, CPT, DRG, NDC, RxNorm, and LOINC. Identify the more common controlled vocabularies in use today. SNOMED, MEDSIN, MEDRA, Nursing Terminologies, MESH, and UMLS. Understand data elements, attributes of data elements. Slide 4. Additional objectives for this unit, Basic Health Data Standards, are to understand contribution of master meta-dictionary of data elements to semantic interoperability. Explain how data structures can be built from basic data components. Explain how templates and archetypes facilitate networking and information interchange. And discuss clinical data architecture, CDA, continuity of care document, CCD, and continuity of care record, CCR, standards. A key requirement for semantic interoperability is to be able to understand what the other person is saying. Data elements are the building blocks for this communication, and we will discuss this topic in some detail. Terminology can be considered to be a subset of data elements. We will look at many of the more popular controlled vocabularies today and understand the source. We will describe the use, purpose, and interrelation among sets of controlled vocabularies in use today. Slide 5. Interoperability, the ability to share and use data, begins with the basic building blocks of what is shared. We call that basic component a data element. A data element has a name attribute, which we call terminology, and we have talked about terminology in the previous lecture. The focus of that lecture was terminology, not the data element. In this lecture, we will discuss data elements and what attributes or characteristics a data element should have to enable interoperability. A data element is the atomic unit of data that is finely grained and has a precise meaning. It is the level at which data is created and collected. This is the level that is necessary to define clinical models and input for clinical decision making. This atomic unit is the level at which data elements can be precisely, uniquely, and unambiguously defined that is independent of use, location, and circumstance. That information is important, but it is a qualifier or additional information that is collected in addition to the data element. The data element simplifies achieving semantic interoperability. It is essential for computer understandability. 
A meta dictionary is a collection or repository of data elements and their attributes. Slide 6. In some of the controlled vocabularies, the distinction between data elements and terminology is difficult to identify. The confusion between terminology and data elements may be a matter of focus. However, to be clear, this unit relates terminology to the actual name of the data element. So, when we are defining data elements, these are questions we must understand. Is hypertension a data element? Is a symptom a data element? Is a lab test a data element? Is a tenanol a data element? Is marital status a data element? And what are the possible answers? The answer is that all of these are data elements at different levels of specificity. Some data elements are at the class level. Others are at an item level. Some are generic and others are specific. It's like comparing man as a data element to Charles as a data element. We need to define every word we will ultimately use to document healthcare and to support secondary uses of the data. Slide 7. We now begin to discuss the attributes of data elements. A code identifier is important because it cannot be misunderstood. It is the key to finding out all the characteristics of the data element, the index into the metadata dictionary. The code should have no meaning. It is simply a pointer. It may have a check digit, which is a mathematic algorithm that weights the numbers in the code sequence in such a way as to identify entry errors. So if I type 123467 plus check digit of 2 rather than 123546 plus 2, the algorithm will recognize the switching of numbers. Most entry errors would be identified by the check digit algorithm. Each data element will be derived to a level of precision to prevent any ambiguity in its meaning and use. If uniform agreement cannot be reached for an element, an element will be defined for each agreement with precise definitions to distinguish. Experience in use might ultimately resolve these disagreements. Slide 8. Interoperability and the resulting return on investment, ROI, on the ability to aggregate and reuse data must start at the lowest level. The sensors that permit a computer to control the flight of an aircraft input hundreds of signals at fundamental levels that permit the computer to make the right and safe decisions and to fly the plane. We need the same levels of specificity in healthcare. If we are to drive dashboards and decision support algorithms, the granularity of the data elements must be at the lowest level. Who defines the data elements is also important. The overlap between clinical specialties is large, and with the desire to share and aggregate data, that data will come together. Therefore, the creation of the master set of data elements must be harmonized across all specialties. A master data element meta dictionary will permit sites to register what data elements they routinely collect and define what data elements are used in a data exchange. Slide 9. A minimum data set, sometimes known as a core data set, identifies the data elements that must be collected for a given purpose. For example, to report an immunization, we identify a group of data elements that provide the desired set of data for this operation. One of the first things people do when starting a project is to identify the minimum data set. Without a master set of data elements, MDE, minimum data sets are created from scratch. Consequently, there is usually a loss of consistency with other data elements. In other words, components, data elements, are apt to have different meanings or different names. Query profiles can be defined from the site's data element set. Systems can incorporate elements from the master set based on their user requirements. An application will probably not use all the elements defined in the MDE set. However, any data element contained within an EHR must be defined in the MDE set. Registries of data elements permit local, 
dynamic classification sets or shared sets for various purposes, including different clinical domains. Registries should become the basis of data transfer to populate research databases, clinical trials, reimbursement, and other purposes. Ultimately, all exchanges of data should be based on profiles defined from the MDE set, including exchange of data among institutional EHRs, longitudinal EHRs, and personal EHRs. The Master Data Elements Set, MDE set, will include categorical terms from high to lower levels. The act of defining these levels will be a development issue. It is most likely that these will be hierarchical. A data class is a type of data. Class examples include demographic, studies, therapies, problems, and physical examination. Gender would be a data element in the class of demographic data. Demographic class might include these subclasses. Individual identification, name, contact information, address, telephones, and email. A study class might include as subclasses radiology, diagnostic tests, and laboratory tests, in turn broken down into hematology, clinical chemistry, and so on. Slide 11. It is likely that most data exchanges between various sites of care will be in a query response mode. By query, we mean that a site will request a specific set of data defined in the request. These sets could be defined on the fly or could be predefined in some business agreement. The query set could be defined by some logic algorithm. For example, for the transfer of a patient to another facility, the sets might be predefined. A site's database of the data elements collected will make it much easier to define what is available and what is desired. Query profiles can be defined from the site's data element set. An MDE set permits local, dynamic classification sets for various purposes, including medical specialties. We need to know what data is collected by any business partner. We need to know what data is required for reporting and other uses. If we use patient care data for clinical trials, we need to know what data is available to us and in what form. Queries become more effective if the query terms come from a master set. Slide 12. This slide shows some of the attributes of a data element. The attributes enable unambiguous understanding of the data element and other important characteristics that enable the effective use of the data element. Knowledge can be coupled to the data element through its attributes. Attributes might be Unique code, short name or acronym, long name, synonyms, definition, use and purpose including context, category, units, data type, value set, mood, state, RIM class, linkages to representation sets, tag as person identifier data. The next few slides will discuss these items in detail. Slide 13. We have already discussed codes. They have no meaning and may include a check digit. Using OIDs, object identifiers, will permit the code to be universal. A consistent short name is useful for data entry and for presentation of data. NA is shorter than sodium, for example. The drug hydrochlorothiazide is much easier written as HCTZ. Short names may be primarily for presentation. In some cases, the short name might be the computer representation of the data element as a variable. This permits the sharing of actual code for specific purposes. The binding of the data element to the computer variable is accomplished through the attribute. The long name should be what two physicians, for example, would use in talking to each other. It is the preferred name and is unique to this data element. Note that synonym attribute permits customization and localization of the preferred name. The key to data elements enabling interoperability is the definition. Many medical terms loosely have multiple definitions. The example of unstable angina with 67 definitions from the literature has already been mentioned. 
In a clinical trial, with a checkbox that says unstable angina, which of the 67 definitions is being used? In some cases, this misunderstanding of a word could be fatal. The data elements should be defined by experts in the field, not a consensus process. Definitions must be precise and unambiguous. A structured definition is one that can be verified by the computer. For example, the data element myocardial infarction would require evidence as defined by other data elements. The integrity of the data can be verified by evaluation of the structured definition. A simple example is obese, can be verified through body mass index, which is derived from weight and height. If data elements are missing, collection of those elements can be prompted to capture a complete data set. Slide 14. Data type tells us whether the data element is numeric, an integer, binary, character, string, blog, date time, or more complex types such as a coded element. An international standard, ISO, HL7, CEN, working as JIC, exists that defines the possible set of data elements. Data type may be simple, for example, numeric, or complex, for example, an address. Units can be a problem. Patient weight can be recorded as pounds or kilograms. If the unit is missing, which is it? Rather than guessing, we need to define which units we are using. The recommended units should come from the set of scientific units. The value set is all of the possible values, answers, a data element can have. For numeric data types, the value set might be a range. For something like administrative data type gender, the value set may come from a coded list with content of male, female, or unknown. The unknown poses a problem. Unknown is a type of term known as a null flavor. In this case, we don't know whether the unknown means we haven't asked or we really can't tell. Note that there is usually another data element called clinical gender whose value set includes over 15 different items. Value sets are key in managing data integrity and in preserving semantic interoperability. A synonym is a term that may have popular, local, or shortcut use and stands for a specific data element. Slide 15. An advanced structure for data elements begins to build knowledge into the data element. These relationship links may show clinical or physiological relationships. They may show class relationships. They may link to possible tests to validate the data. They may suggest other data to be collected. They may identify categories of data element, such as this data element is a lab test or a diagnostic test or a cardiology diagnostic test. Examples of relationship among data elements include hierarchical relationships, bidirectional parent-children, other linkages, equivalent opposite, and flags, top level, leaf level. Classifications such as drug type, antihistamine or beta blocker, are particularly important for retrievals. For example, list any analgesic the patient may be taking or any anti-inflammatory drug the patient may be taking. We could ask if the patient has a murmur without worrying about what specific murmur. Although not so much a problem in the U.S., for Europe and the rest of the world, language is a problem. If one of the attributes includes the concept represented by a numeric code and translated to a set of languages, going from one language to another would be trivial. The question is, what languages would be part of the initial set? Slide 16. The authority and stewardship of each data element is very important in the authority, trustworthiness, maintenance of the data element. There can be only one boss, but we can support different levels of interest. Version and date of last status is also important for maintaining provenance of the element. These administrative attributes might be the starting set of attributes. Owner, caretaker, steward, responsible organization, submitting organization, registration authority, status, active, inactive, or deprecated, version, 
and date. Slide 17. Data elements should not be controversial since they represent a master set, not a required set. The idea for a master data set is that no one has to use every item, but if a data element is used, it must come from the master set and enforce all of the attributes. Also, the master value set can be constrained for a particular purpose. The idea is that any element that is used can be reused reliably. Creating these attributes will take time and must include a mixture of clinical groups and different stakeholders. What is the difference in a researcher's needs and a caregiver's needs? The update and maintenance must be continual. Categories and groupings of data elements are subject to discussion and debate by appropriate stakeholders. Attribute sets are subject to discussion and debate. Tool sets might evolve in functionality provided. Early users would be essential for identifying issues, gaps, and unforeseen consequences. Permanent support, including maintenance, distribution, and funding, must be defined. Slide 18. ISO IEC 11179 is the single ISO standard that lays out much of what is required for the definition and maintenance of data elements. It stops short of the entire requirements, but it is the best set of rules available. The name ISO 11179 is Information Technology, Specification and Standardization of Data Elements. The parts 1 through 6 are identified in the next slide. The standard defines a meta model for data element metadata. The standards defines attributes to convey semantic, syntactic, and lexical meaning that are human and machine understandable and are unambiguous. Slide 19. The ISO 11179 is a six-part standard. The parts are as follows. Part 1. Framework for the specification and standardization of data elements. Part 2. Classification for data elements. Part 3. Basic attributes of data elements. Part 4. Rules and guidelines for the formulation of data definitions. Part 5. Naming and Identification Principles for Data Elements Part 6 Registration of Data Elements Part 3 is of interest to us in this lecture. Slide 20 The Australian Institute of Health and Welfare has created a rich resource for data elements. The Meta Dictionary is based on the ISO 11179 standard. This slide shows some of the identifying and definitional attributes for gender or sex. The identifying and definitional attributes are shown on this slide. Metadata item type, data element. Short name, sex. METEOR identifier 287316. Registration status. Community services standard 2508 2005. Housing Assistance, Standard 10-02-2006. Health, Standard 04-05-2005. Early Childhood, Standard 21-05-2010. Homelessness, Standard 23-08-2010. Definition, the biological distinction between male and female as represented by a code. Data element concept, person, sex. Slide 21. Continuation of the entry for person, sex. Relational and representational attribute has as subtopics representation class, code, data type, number, Format, N. Maximum character length, 1. Permissible values, 1. Male, 2. Female, 3. Intersex or indeterminate. Supplementary values, 9. Not stated, inadequately described. The content further notes, 
diagnosis and procedure codes should be checked against the national ICD-10 AM sex edits unless the person is undergoing or has undergone a sex change or has a genetic condition resulting in a conflict between sex and ICD-10 AM code. The content further defines what is meant by intersex or indeterminate. Intersex or indeterminate refers to a person who, because of a genetic condition, was born with reproductive organs or sex chromosomes that are not exclusively male or female, or whose sex has not yet been determined for whatever reason. Intersex or indeterminate should be confirmed if reported for people aged 90 days or greater. This resource, the Metadata Online Registry, METEOR, is a valuable resource not only does it include a rich registry of data elements, but it contains a number of minimum data sets for certain diseases and encounter situations. Slide 22. The U.S. Health Information Knowledge Base, USHIC, is a metadata registry of the data elements and their characteristics from the standards that the HHS Secretary has endorsed, adopted, and recognized. It is populated by data elements provided by SDOs and other healthcare organizations and is ISO 11179 compliant. This resource is also an important knowledge resource for data elements. Slide 23. NCI has done much work in creating data element registries. Components include Cancer Data Standard Repository, CADSR, Registry of Common Data Elements, Enterprise Vocabulary Service, EVS, Registry of Terminology Used by CDSR, includes SNOMED CT, MEDRA, VANDFRT, LOINC, HL7, NCI Thesaurus. The work is based on ISO 11179. Tools available include CDE Browser, UML Browser, Freestyle Search, CDE Curation Tool, Form Maker, and others. It sets a role model for all of NIH. If you are interested in this topic, it's worth a visit to the NCI URL. NCI supports a number of tools to support the creation of data elements in mapping local terminologies to the national standard, in creating forms, and in searching for data elements. Other groups are now submitting data elements for inclusion in this database. It has a potential for becoming the national resource for data elements. Slide 24. The Cancer Biomedical Informatics Grid, CABIG, initiative overseen by the National Cancer Institute Center for Biomedical Informatics and Information Technology, CBIIT, was conceived to address the needs of all constituencies in the cancer community researchers, clinicians, patients, to share data and knowledge, simplify collaboration, speed research to get diagnostics and therapeutics from bench to bedside faster and more cost-effectively, and ultimately realize the potential of personalized medicine. CABIG also addresses a critical problem facing both basic and clinical researchers today an explosion of data that requires new approaches for collection, management, and analysis. Although initially focused on cancer research and care, CABIG technology is widely applicable to other therapeutic areas. Slide 25. Activities of CABIG include development of vocabularies and common data elements, Evaluate and integrate systems for vocabulary and ontology content development used throughout CABIG system and establish a review process that classifies vocabulary into bronze, silver, gold categories with rigid rules for definition. These data elements are stored in NCI's CADSR EVS. Slide 26. Clinical Data Interchange Standards Consortium, CDISC, products have been previously noted, but it is important to keep them in mind. These data elements are defined for the research community. Some of the products include Study Data Tabulation Model, Data Elements Used for Clinical Trials, Operational Data Model, ODM, 
and the Clinical Data Acquisition Standards Harmonization, CDASH. CDISC uses NCI's CADSR. More information about these standards can be found at the CDISC website. Slide 27. This slide shows how we might use a global master repository of data elements or meta dictionary. Each term would contain the full set of attributes including definition, names, units, and value sets. The existing intellectual property of the many existing controlled terminologies would be used to help create this master meta dictionary. A hospital would provide a controlled, web accessible registry defining the data elements collected by the hospital. These data elements would be indicated by just the code. The associated attributes would be defined in the master dictionary. The hospital would not necessarily collect all the data elements defined in the master set, but it would collect no data elements not contained in the set. Another hospital would do the same. For example, if a patient were to be transferred from Hospital A to Hospital B, a business agreement could be defined that would define the flow of data between the two hospitals. Another example might be the flow of data from a hospital to a nursing home when the patient was transferred to the nursing home. If the patient was transferred back to the hospital, a different set of data elements might be specified. These business agreements could define the data flow requirements for purpose of reimbursement, for public health reporting, for clinical trials, for performance evaluation, any number of reasons. Event-based exchanges of data would be defined by simply enumerating the codes. The actual exchanges would be the code's use meaning. Attributes and constructs would be derived from the master repository. Source of slide W. Ed Hammond, Ph.D. Slide 28. This concludes Lecture D of Basic Health Data Standards. Perhaps this lecture tells you more than you will ever need to know about data elements. A master set is a necessary part of semantic interoperability and must include a fully defined set of attributes. Use ISO 11179 as the base for the master set. It must be a global effort. However, it is important for you to understand the importance to supporting the concepts of a master registry of data elements. You have some idea of the tools that are available for changing from a local vocabulary to the master set, a task that might be assigned to you. The power of a global master data elements registry is huge. By coupling knowledge into the definitions, we take a giant leap forward in supporting evidence-based medicine.